Last time on Farm to Uni, a journey through Dee's supply chain, we visited the farm stage where the corn had grown for the Rackalitas tortilla chips. The corn has just been directly shipped to the Rackalitas tortilla factory with the chips undergo the processing stage at the supply chain. We were shown how the chips are made by the owner of Rackalitas tortillas, Lil Rich. Okay, so we just watched Jaime El Toro dump all these bags of corn out. That's right. And so what is he prepping this for? He's, it, we put a pre-measured amount in here. We put 900 pounds of corn. We want to make sure it's the same, 900 pounds, because our lime is calculated at that amount. The water, the temperature, and so we have fluctuations in weight. And so that's why we've got to have someone, you know, Jaime's real good with the sacks. As you saw earlier, we also have a bulk corn. And so that you've got to be very careful about how much goes in here. So this is prepping for the cooking. That's correct. Okay, food cooking prep. Cooking food prep. prep. <laughs> and so what is the point of this process? It's just stirring, mixing up the corn and the lime. And what is that? It's emitting some type of vapor. Yeah, yeah. What you're getting is a little bit of the gases from the lime, the calcium hydroxide. A little bit. And, and then just that? heat. I mean, it's hot in here. So, and what does that do for the corn tortilla making process? What does that? It helps break down the corn. It helps dissolve the skin, make it easier to separate the, the skin from the starch okay. in the center part. So there you go. Cool. You want to take a stir? Sure. Uh, this is where we wash the corn, so we're shoveling the corn into our augers. We're going to run them up. Typically for a white corn, we would wash it a lot. Right now, this is a yellow corn. We want a yellow corn color. We want a yellow corn flavor. We're going to leave more of the lime in it. We won't wash it near as much. All right, what's the next step of the process? Over to the grinder. All right, let's go to the grinder. These are the grinding stones. Okay. They're made out of Mexican lava rock. Cool. And so we've got two of them attached here. One is attached to this plate, it's facing in. Another one is attached to the electric motor. So the two stones turn against each other. An auger, there's an auger inside here that brings the corn in. So basically it's bringing it in here. As they turn, it starts to grind them real coarse. And then see it gets finer and finer as it comes to the outside. But this is the way they used to do it with a pistol, like a, a, just a stone. Then they, they finally made these where they would turn these by hand. Now we're doing them by, with electric motors. So this is industrial era, like matate, Mexican grinding stuff. That's stone. right, that's right. And cool. these things are each, they probably weigh about 70 to 80 pounds. Wow. We've got two of them on there. That's a lot. Yeah, it's funny, if you go to Mexico and you go to the pyramids, um, you'll see old grinding stones that are the same material. They come from the same part of the country. So you're using the same stone that the Aztecs used. That's the fun part about what we do and, and how we do it, is that we're not forgetting our roots where this all came from a thousand, thousands of years ago. We're staying true to those roots, but trying to do it at a, at a modern speed. That's great. I love it. Now, what is this stage? This is the front of, the, this is the head of the chip line. This is what we call, call a sheeter roller. I've got two huge rollers here that are turning into each other. You're seeing masa drop down between those rollers. When we want to make the chip thicker, we open the roller up. When we want to make it thin, we squeeze it together. I've got a cutter underneath that will give it its shape, size, and dimension. And so from there, it's forming it and then sending it right into the oven. We've got a three-pass oven production. All right, so you're composting all the waste that's coming off of this production. Yep, every bit of it. And so this seems like it take a lot of energy to, uh, to power this factory. What type of utilities are you using to power Oh, the... I thought you meant coffee or caffeine. No. Yes, it does <laughs> take a lot of energy. Um, all of our electricity here is wind generated, 100%. We did that back in about 2000, I think 7, 2008. Um, and then we also use a lot of natural gas as well. Okay, it's good to know. You want to go see the back end of this machine? Yeah, let's go see the let's back end. Let's go look of at it. So what we've got behind us is our oven where we're baking the chip. We're basically making little tiny baby corn tortillas. Okay. And so after they've been baked, we want to dry the surface. We want to dry them out. So that's what we've got here. We call it an equilibrator. 
and so we're drying them. The, the drier we can get the chip here, the less oil it soaks up when it's being fried. Okay. And it's a healthier chip. Our chip has about four to five percent less oil than most any other brand. That's and good. It's something we strive for. It's mesmerizing. It's just a, a maze of confusion going on. I could meditate on this. That's right. So from here, we're going to dry a little bit more and then go into our fryer. Okay. Alrighty, so this is after the fryer. That's right, they've just been fried. Okay. And we're frying them in 100% sunflower oil. It's a high oleic sunflower seed grown and pressed here in Colorado, in Lamar, Colorado, by a company called Colorado Mills. So another local product. Absolutely, and it's super healthy for you. It's actually the healthiest edible oil there is. It's healthier than avocado, healthier than, than any of them, any of them. That's why we use it. It actually costs quite a bit more, but when you're trying to make an insanely great product like we are, there's no other oil we could possibly use besides this. That's great. So from here, they're gonna come out. They're gonna have just a little bit of oil on them, just, just a little bit, to, so that we can lightly salt them. That way the salt sticks to it. The okay. tumbler just flipping around and we add our sea salt, and actually it's even sea salt. We don't miss a twist. So what we're doing here, this is where we're scaling them and weighing them out for the exact six pounds that everyone wants. So what makes six pounds a magic number? Kind of industry standard. <laughs> okay. And although I tell you lately, it seems like one person could sit down and darn near eat a six pound box by themselves. So from here, they're gonna get uh, in, dropped into the box. We're gonna seal the bag. We're gonna tape the box, stack it, palletize it and these are gonna be leaving tomorrow.